Ah, well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to another Tabernacle Baptist Church time of devotion. I trust that the Lord will bless us as we briefly study His Word this morning. Let's pray, shall we? <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank You that You are a great God. You are worthy to be praised. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. We want to thank You that You loved us so much that You allowed Your only Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to come into this world to die for sinners such as us. We thank you that Jesus conquered the death on Calvary and that uh, he uh, rose again uh, from uh, the tomb and was seen by many before ascending into heaven. And so we serve a risen Lord today. He's alive at the head of his church. He's alive at the head of his creation. He's alive in the heart of every believer. And we do thank you for your word, which is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And we pray, Lord, that as we look at your word today and read it and meditate upon it, that you will speak to us and help us to understand what you are saying to us and also to help us to apply the truth therein to our daily walk with you. We ask all these things, as always, seeking the forgiveness of our many sins, in Jesus' name, Amen. I just want to read to you a very simple uh, verse from uh, Nehemiah uh, chapter 8, uh, verse 10. And it says this, Go, eat rich foods and drink sweet drinks and allot portions to those who had nothing prepared. For today is holy to our Lord. Do not be saddened this day, for rejoicing in the Lord is your strength. Nehemiah had rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem, and many Israelites had returned to their homeland following the nation's 70-year exile in Babylon. It was the first day of their new year, the Feast of Trumpets. And the nation of Israel, which had largely renounced God, stood in the city square and started to listen to Ezra, the priest, reading the word of the Lord. He read from the book of the law that had been given to, uh, by God to Israel. As they listened to God's word being read to them, this wayward nation, as one man, realize how far they had wandered from their God, how deeply they had fallen into sin. All at first, uh, they start, oh, at first they started to rejoice and cried out, Amen, Amen. But as Ezra continued to read the scripture, they started to realize how deeply they had fallen into sin and how far they had wandered away from the truth of God's word. And both men and women, we are told, began to mourn and grieve deeply. The people wept as they heard the scriptures being read, for they acknowledged their sin. But Nehemiah, the governor, stood up and reminded the people, that this first day of the new year was a special feast day of the Lord. He comforted them, saying, Go, eat of the fat, drink of the sweet, and send portions to him who has nothing prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. We too can wander far from the Lord. We can leave our first love and fall into foolish sin. We can buy into various false teachings, live our lives in selfish pride, and even keep the Lord Jesus standing outside the door of our hearts. But like Israel today, uh, this is a day that is a feast day for us. For Christ our Saviour has redeemed us by his blood. 
and we have been released from the bondage of slavery to sin into the freedom of Christ's saving grace. Like Israel, we should listen to the word of the Lord, for faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Like Israel, we should confess our sin and recognize how far we may have wandered from the Lord. We should turn away from our wrong attitudes and actions and look to Jesus. For every day is a day that is holy to the Lord. And like Israel, we should remain in self-condemnation, but rejoice that there is now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. And like Israel, we should follow the wise advice of Nehemiah, for the joy of the Lord is indeed our strength. Let us keep the word of God fresh in our hearts each day. Let us recognize our faults and failings and readily confess our sins to our Father in heaven. And let us from this day forward recognize that every day is a day of rejoicing. Let us never forget that we are the people of God who have been purchased with the precious blood of Christ and that the many precious promises of God towards us, his sons and heirs, are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Let us in everything by prayer and praise Rejoice in the Lord and abide in his love. For the joy of the Lord is indeed our strength through time and into eternity. Let's pray, shall we? Father, thank you that you are my joy and my strength. Thank you that there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. And thank you that your grace is sufficient for me. Keep me faithful to you. For you and my faithful for you are my faithful and generous God. In Christ I pray. Amen. Well, I wonder if God has been speaking to you this morning. We are told to be joyful. But you know, the greatest joy is to have our salvation, the gift of salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. And that gift is being offered to you today. What you need to do, if you believe the Holy Spirit is moving in your heart, if you believe God and the Lord Jesus are knocking at the door of your life, what you need to do is to accept him humbly as your servant today, uh, as a servant today. You need to confess your sin. You need to repent of your sin. And then you need to make a vow that you're going to serve him and the Lord Jesus Christ, whatever way he shows you in this life on earth, and then on into eternity. Now that is joy, to be able to call Jesus your Savior. If you want to accept Jesus today, why don't you just pray this simple prayer after me now? Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. 
I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Saviour. Amen. Well, if you've prayed that prayer, God bless you. The Lord has come into your heart and your life. Now, you might feel inadequate. You might feel perhaps doubtful. But what you need to do, and don't delay, is to tell someone. And uh, we would suggest that you speak to the pastor of your local gospel preaching church or one of the leaders there. And I can assure you they will be delighted to help you, uh, to speak to you, to encourage you, and to welcome you into the family of God. And if uh, you live in the Newbridge area, well, you're more than welcome to speak to our pastor, the Reverend Peter Cho, or any of the leaders. And again, we will be thrilled to help you and guide you and nurture you and encourage you and to love you uh, as one of God's children. Why don't you do that straight away? God bless. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time of, of uh, prayer and meditation on your word. We do ask, Lord, that you will be with us for the remainder of this day that you will uh, give us wisdom to deal with the various challenges and issues that we have to face. But you will also reassure us that you are a God who keeps your promises and that you will be with us in whatever circumstances we find ourselves. Help us, Lord, we pray today, because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.